The outcome for today's lesson is how transport on the Thames has changed from the days of when the London Nautical School was formed um, to today. London Nautical School was formed in 1915 as a result of the Titanic disaster of 1912. This was taken from a film at the early days of the London Nautical School and it shows how busy it is loading and unloading the ships and how the cargoes weren't containerised. Here's a car, you just wouldn't get this today, a car being loaded into the inside or hold of a ship and each individual cargo lifted out on the straps. So here's a view about 70 years ago of looking at the, uh, the Thames between London Bridge and Tower Bridge which is called the Pool of London. The next shot is um, students at the London Nautical School, see how the uh, uniforms changed. And even the river then, we had ships unloading into lighters, the vessels there are lighters. They're called lighters because they make the ships lighter. Originally most of the cargo was unloaded in the Pool of London, which is between London Bridge and Tower Bridge. And then it was taken by lighters. Let's say they're called lighters because they uh, lighten the load of the ship uh, to be discharged at the wharfs. A lot of these lighters didn't have um, any engines, they're called dumb lighters, and they were rowed by a person with oars. As you can see here, this is the stretch of water just down the river from the school. You can see the tugs and the steam tugs and the ships, and there's a lot of activity going on in the river. So, to contrast what it was like in 1915 and what it was like today. I took some video of the Pool of London this morning in March 2021. So at the moment, due to Covid, there is no passenger traffic with the clipper boats and no pleasure craft. But taking that out, I travelled all the way from Canary Wharf on the river, cycling up the path to the Pool of London here, so this is looking from Tower Bridge across the Pool of London. And I travelled that whole distance over about 40 minutes and I saw one commercial vessel. That commercial vessel, I'll show you a bit later, was from um, the Thames Tybo project, taking kit or spoil from there downriver um, and all over the place. So this was the original place where people used to come in discharge their cargo before the docks. So the vessels used to come into the wharves along the side. They used to anchor in the pool and discharge into the lighters and the lighters would take the cargo away. So this was bustling, this was huge. There was a lot going on here. And here's another view of Tower Bridge looking down and between Tower Bridge here, Tower London, across the river. It was eerily quiet very little going on and there's one lighter which is used for ceremonial and rowing for demonstrations here she is so there's one in this stretch in the port of london from the bygone past the city of london and hms belfast that we quite often visit and hopefully we'll visit again soon <coughs> So this is looking towards London Bridge, which is the new London Bridge which was put in the 60s. And the old video I showed you was the old London Bridge, which was sold in the 60s and went to America. Looking straight across on this freeze frame is the old Billingsgate Market, just past that white boat, where the vessels used to come in, discharge their fish, and they were sold. If we look carefully to the top left in that last clip, there was the um, CPBS, Capital Pleasure Boat Services, tug pushing... Um, spile from the Thames Tiber project. That was the one tug that I saw in the whole trip up the Thames this morning. These next vessels are Thames sailing barges which are unique to the Thames. They had flat bottoms and they were easy to sail with two people, a man, a boy and a dog. So coming to St Catherine's Dock this morning, um, there was barges, the do here, and the barges laid up in St Catherine's. They're used for pleasure purposes and some of them are privately owned and they're used for barge racing so there's still some barge racing so this is St Catherine's dock this morning and a closer up of the barges which hopefully uh, we'll get sailing in the summer and we'll see them sailing in the summer 
Further down the river we had the Docklands. Um, these were built to unload the ships um, because there was a lot of stealing going on. So they had high sides to the docks to stop people coming in to steal. And they'd unload in the docks. We just got a tug and lighters there in the foreground. We've got the Thames barge. We've just seen the bustling in the docks and loads going on. This is a recent one I took of Millwall Outer Dock. Um, there is no commercial vessels in the Millwall Outer Dock. It's usually purely for recreational. So there's the middle dock and we're panning around the outer dock and we can see the skyline just behind here of Canary Wharf and looking across and the old cranes and in the distance the Dockland Sailing and Water Sports Centre which is used for pleasure sailing. Um, and canoeing and paddle boarding and his older picture from the same position um, of the knuckle on the dock when it was a busy thriving port with square riggers trading and locking out by the sailing centre out to the river. So from all that trade in the city, all that trade in the dock starting off on the Pool of London where people would put more up and the lighters discharge and then the docks built and all the uh, the docking work and the unloading in the dock and the thousands of people working, where has all the trade gone? Simply, with containerization, it's all moved east and down river. So with containerization, means you can put all your cargo in boxes and then transport it all over the world. We've now moved further down the river to Thamesport, which is capable of accepting the largest container ship in the world. So basically it's all moved east, it's all gone containerization, it's all much more efficient so it doesn't need all the small boats, it doesn't need the lighters, it doesn't need the stevedores, the dockers, it's all done in containers straight off the containers then it's loaded either onto lorries or onto a railway system to be distributed into the UK. Shipping, the industry which secured London's status as a capital city and today another chapter was written in the story of the docks. The MOL Caledon is the first ship to unload its cargo at London Gateway, a new deep water wharf close to Stamford La Hope in Essex. And with it comes a promise of thousands of new jobs. Today we have 300 people working directly for London Gateway. Uh, we've had 12,000 people applying to work at London Gateway. And at full build out in a few years' time, we'll have 12,000 people working here on site at London Gateway across both the port and the logistics park. The port's owners hope the shipping side of the business will generate 2,000 jobs, but five times as many could be employed in the distribution warehouses being built alongside. It's still a drop in the ocean compared to the heyday of the London docks. A city of ships. Not only is London the greatest metropolis of the world, but also, and above all, it is a great seaport. In 1939, 30,000 dockers were employed, loading and unloading 60,000 ships a year. At the end of the 1890s, there were fewer boats, but the workforce was closer to 100,000. Those days are unlikely to be repeated. At 60,000 tonnes, the Caledon is too big to go upriver. In one sense, she represents the future and the past. As merchant vessels have grown in size, the docks have progressively moved downstream from the Pool of London and St Catharines to the Royals and Tilbury and now London Gateway. In June 2020, the arrival of the world's largest container ship to the London Gateway port. Obviously this ship couldn't go any further up the river, certainly couldn't reach any of the other docks or lock into any other docks. So with the London Gateway, we have access to the largest vessel in the world discharging and loading on containers in the London Gateway. So the history of the river's gone from the docks, Pool of London, the docks in London, then containerization, moving down to Tilbury Docks and now to the London Gateway, which means further up river, there's very little commercial traffic. And on my ride this morning from Canary Wharf to the Pool of London, I saw one commercial vessel.